Judges 9. Abim like son of Jerobal went to his mother's brothers in Shechem and said to them and to all his mother's clan. Ask all the citizens of Shechem, which is better for you, to have all seventy of Jerobal's sons rule over you, or just one man. Remember, I am your flesh and blood. When the brothers repeated all this to the citizens of Shechem, they were inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is related to us. They gave him seventy shekels of silver from the temple of Balbirith, and Abimelech used it to hire reckless scoundrels, who became his followers. He went to his father's home in Afra and on one stone murdered his seventy brothers, the sons of Jerobal. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jerobal, escaped by hiding. Then all the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo gathered beside the great tree at the pillar in Shechem to crown Abimelech king. When Jotham was told about this, he climbed up on the top of Mount Gerizim and shouted to them, Listen to me, citizens of Shechem, so that God may listen to you. One day the trees went out to anoint a king for themselves. They said to the olive tree, Be our king. But the olive tree answered, Should I give up my oil, by which both gods and humans are honored, to hold sway over the trees? Next, the trees said to the fig tree, Come and be our king. But the fig tree replied, Should I give up my fruit, so good and sweet, to hold sway over the trees? Then the trees said to the vine, Come and be our king. But the vine answered, Should I give up my wine, which cheers both gods and humans, to hold sway over the trees? Finally all the trees said to the thornbush, Come and be our king. The thornbush said to the trees, If you really want to anoint me king over you, come and take refuge in my shade but if not, then let fire come out of the thornbush and consume the cedars of Lebanon. Have you acted honorably and in good faith by making a bind like king? Have you been fair to Jerobal and his family? Have you treated him as he deserves? Remember that my father fought for you and risked his life to rescue you from the hand of Midian. But today you have revolted against my father's family. You have murdered his seventy sons on a single stone and have made a Abimelech, the son of his female slave, king over the citizens of Shechem, because he is related to you. So have you acted honorably and in good faith toward Jerobal and his family today? If you have, may Abimelech be your joy, and may you be his, too. But if you have not, let fire come out from Abimelech and consume you, the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo, and let fire come out from you, the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo, and consume Abimelech. Then Jotham fled, escaping to Beer, and he lived there because he was afraid of his brother Abimelech. After Abimelech had governed Israel three years, God stirred up animosity between Abimelech and the citizens of Shechem so that they acted treacherously against Abimelech. God did this in order that the crime against Jerobal's seventy sons, the shedding of their blood, might be avenged on their brother Abimelech and on the citizens of Shechem, who had helped him murder his brothers. In opposition to him these citizens of Shechem set men on the hilltops to ambush and rob everyone who passed by, and this was reported to Abimelech. Now Gaul son of Ebed moved with his clan into Shechem, and its citizens put their confidence in him. After they had gone out into the fields and gathered the grapes and trodden them, they held a festival in the temple of their god. While they were eating and drinking, they cursed Abimelech. Then Gaul son of Ebed said, Who is Abimelech, and why should we Shechemites be subject to him? Isn't he Jerobal's son, and isn't Zebul his deputy? Serve the family of Hammer, Shechem's father. Why should we serve Abimelech? If only this people were under my command. Then I would get rid of him. I would say to Abimelech, call out your whole army. When Zebul the governor of the city heard what Gaul son of Ebed said, he was very angry. Under cover he sent messengers to Abimelech, saying, Gaul son of Ebed and his clan have come to Shechem and are stirring up the city against you. Now then, during the night you and your men should come and lie in wait in the fields. In the morning at sunrise, advance against the city. When Gaul and his men come out against you, seize the opportunity to attack them. So Abimelech and all his troops set out by night and took up concealed positions near Shechem in four companies. Now Gaul son of Ebed had gone out and was standing at the entrance of the city gate just as Abimelech and his troops came out from their hiding place. When Gaul saw them, he said to Zebul, Look, people are coming down from the tops of the mountains. Zebul replied, You mistake the shadows of the mountains for men. But Gaul spoke up again, Look, people are coming down from the central hill, and a company is coming from the direction of the diviner's tree. 
Then Zebul said to him, Where is your big talk now, you who said, Who is Abimelech that we should be subject to him? Aren't these the men you ridiculed? Go out and fight them. So Gaul led out the citizens of Shechem and fought Abimelech. Abimelech chased him all the way to the entrance of the gate, and many were killed as they fled. Then Abimelech stayed in Aruma, and Zebul drove Gaul and his clan out of Shechem. The next day the people of Shechem went out to the fields, and this was reported to Abimelech. So he took his men, divided them into three companies, and set an ambush in the fields. When he saw the people coming out of the city, he rose to attack them. Abimelech and the companies with him rushed forward to a position at the entrance of the city gate. Then two companies attacked those in the fields and struck them down. All that day Abimelech pressed his attack against the city until he had captured it and killed its people. Then he destroyed the city and scattered salt over it. On hearing this, the citizens in the tower of Shechem went into the stronghold of the temple of Elbirith. When Abimelech heard that they had assembled there, he and all his men went up Mount Zalman. He took an axe and cut off some branches, which he lifted to his shoulders. He ordered the men with him, Quick! Do what you have seen me do. So all the men cut branches and followed Abimelech. They piled them against the stronghold and set it on fire with the people still inside. So all the people in the tower of Shechem, about a thousand men and women, also died. Next Abimelech went to Thebes and besieged it and captured it. Inside the city, however, was a strong tower, to which all the men and women all the people of the city had fled. They had locked themselves in and climbed up on the tower roof. Abimelech went to the tower and attacked it. But as he approached the entrance to the tower to set it on fire, a woman dropped an upper millstone on his head and cracked his skull. Hurriedly he called to his armor-bearer, draw your sword and kill me, so that they can't say, a woman killed him. So his servant ran him through, and he died. When the Israelites saw that Abimelech was dead, they went home. Thus God repaid the wickedness that Abimelech had done to his father by murdering his seventy brothers. God also made the people of Shechem pay for all their wickedness. The curse of Jotham son of Jeroboam came on them. Thanks for listening to another chapter of the Bible. At My Faith Fuel, we believe a good coffee fuels your faith and energizes your day. Please visit MyFaithFuel.com to explore our delicious coffee blends. Part of each purchase goes to training worshippers around the world. Thanks for listening.